Okay, Dr. Mindy here, and I want to talk today about stem cells. Um, this has been a topic we've been carrying on through Fast Training Week uh, this whole week, and um, I really want to give you some specifics, and I want to summarize everything I've talked about this week. And I want to answer those of you that went on our community page and asked questions this morning. I have your questions right here, and I want to answer all of those for you. So let me start off by saying, if you're new to my channel, this is the first time you're hearing of Fast Training Week. Um, what I do in my Resetter group in, on Facebook is I take five days every month and we practice different fasts. So there are seven different fasts. I did a whole video on them. You can go watch that. Um, what the feedback we got from many of you here on YouTube was that you're not on Facebook and you still want to participate in the Fast Training Week. So this is our first ever, we're still working out some of the kinks, uh, this is our first ever attempt to really come to you guys here on YouTube only and involve you in the process of Fast Training Week. So I hope it's been good for you. I love the questions that so many of you asked um, on the community page. I love the comments. Uh, it was fun for me to get to know you, um, so I really enjoyed going through those comments and, and pulling out my, my question sheet. But let me get right down to it. So there are seven key strategies you can do to build stem cells. And actually, let me back up one step. What I want you to realize is if you're past the age of 45-ish, you are, your body is no longer producing stem cells and the stem cells you have every single day are getting damaged. When you run out of those stem cells, when those stem cells diminish, when they age, uh, what happens is you age quicker, but also you don't heal as fast, uh, you don't recover from injuries as much, um, you're, you're leaving your body more open for disease processes, so these stem cells, what many of us in the natural healthcare world are really starting to realize is they're kind of the fountain of youth. And there's a lot of cool ways that you can naturally stimulate these stem cells without um, having to do expensive injections. So let me give you seven of those ways. So let me start off with three of them are fasts. Okay, and this is all based off of research. Everything I'm bringing you here has multiple research studies with it. I will put in the, in the notes the studies so you can see it. Um, give us some time, this video is live, so give us some time to get those studies in uh, so that you have them, because I know you like the studies. So three different types of fasting. MIT did a research study on 24-hour fasts and found that a 24-hour fast would start the stem cell production. So I encourage you to do a 24 hour fast once or twice a week, really helpful. Fast mimicking diet, four days of the fast mimicking diet would help intestinal stem cells. So intestinal stem cells are important for fighting pathogens like Candida and E. coli and, and SIBO. They're also important for preventing things like leaky gut. So fast mimicking four days started to see a boost of intestinal stem cells Fast mimicking five days started to see repairing, the stem cells would start to repair the pancreas. So that was a big study that Walter Longo did. Um, water fasting, three days of water fasting, we saw, a, or Walter Longo saw a reboot of the whole immune system. This was a study done on uh, patients who had, uh, who were doing chemotherapy. So I know some of the questions in here were around cancer and chemotherapy. So I wanna make sure um, that you get the power of that study. Three days on the third day, the whole immune system reboot itself. The stem cells went in and, and repaired the old worn out white blood cells. So it's a really powerful thing for all of us, but especially if you have cancer, to practice a minimum of three-day water fasting. Um, I recommend two to three times a year. Uh, a lot of people do it once a month when we do our fast training. Okay, so those are the three fasts that have science behind them for stem cell secretion and repair and regeneration. Okay, then we have other ways that we can improve stem cells. So one of them I talked about last night, which is HIIT training. So HIIT training is where you're doing an exercise all out, 100% as fast as you can 
for a minimum of 30 seconds. So you either run in place, you do jumping jacks, but you're doing it as fast as you can for 30 seconds. Um, there are on, the, on my um, playlist here, if you go under my workouts, I have some examples of HIIT training already here on YouTube. So go check those out. I do a, a HIIT training with my uh, patients in my office every Saturday morning. The cool thing I love about HIIT training is it doesn't have to be long. It can be as little as 15 minutes. Now, combine that. So what HIIT training, by the way, does, and this was made really famous by um, Tabatis, uh, a Japanese researcher, it stimulates growth hormone. And when growth hormone goes up, you get a surge of stem cell production. So these workouts are imperative if you wanna slow the aging process. You, but again, I can't emphasize enough you got in 15 minutes, when you're going all out, you wanna be sucking air because it's that gasping for air. That's that like having to take deep breaths that's going to affect stem cell, the growth hormone production. Um, resistance training. So there's some great research showing that when you're doing things like a push up is resistance training, a tricep dip, a lunge, anything where you're using your own body weight as a resistance is resistance training. The difference between resistance training and just regular old strength training is when you go to lift a weight, what you're doing is you, it, it may take work to actually lift the weight, but then you can just kind of drop it and let gravity take it back down. So you're only getting one movement. With res resistance training, you're working against a resistance so that you're both getting eccentric and concentric contracting muscles. So that's the difference. I like, you'll see if you go to my workout section, I like to mix HIIT training with resistance training. I think it's a good combination. So those have, both have a tremendous amount of science around how it can slow aging and improve stem cells. With resistance training, you're specifically working on the hypothalamus, I'm sorry, the muscle skeletal st cells. So the stem cells that are in your muscles. Um, this is great, by the way, for repair of injuries, things like that. Now, there are foods you can be eating to improve stem cell production or improve the health of your stem cell. So some of them are gonna be very familiar for those of you who've been fast mimicking. Blueberries, uh, green tea. Um, I talked uh, to my resetters about, this is one of my favorite teas. You can find it on my website. Um, it's called Peak Tea, and you can find it under my favorites. Um, on, if you just go to drmindypels.com, you go under resources and go to my favorites. We have some links to this. This has been kind of fun. I've been drinking this periodically this week. They come in little packets and it's green tea. So, so many great studies on green tea. Um, pomegranates I'm, are, will also help with stem cell regeneration. I'm not really a fan of pomegranate juice because I think it's too sweet. But pomegranates by themselves, I, I open them up and put the seeds in a salad, a green salad, and that is really yummy. So, um, so try some pomegranates, goji berries. Again, if you can get it fresh and not in a juice, that would be preferred. Spirulina. So um, my resetters also asked me about what types of spirulina that I use. Um, and spirulina and blue-green algae, I'll put them in the same category. This is a product that I just started. I, I, I'm the, the only thing I can tell you about it is that the taste isn't bad and that it has no chemicals, no heavy metals in it. So I already vetted it for that. I'm literally trying it for the first time this week. Um, and it's yummy. It's good. I put a little teaspoon in water and just go about my day drinking the water. So um, those foods, oh, and then uh, let me back up one, one thought. All the foods I just mentioned, blueberries, green tea, pomegranates, goji berries, spirulina, blue-green algae, they really help with two types of stem cells. Bone marrow stem cells, which those of you who have osteoporosis, this is really, these are really important for you. Um, and they also help with the memory cells that are in the hippocampus. This is crucial because the hippocampus is where Alzheimer's and dementia is happening. It's deep in your brain and it's where mood and memory come from. So really making sure that you're getting a daily dose of some of those, of those foods are great. Now there are other supplements that you can take that will help with stem cells as well. And, I, and I'll post an article tomorrow morning, I'll put it on the community page about these supplements because I found some really good science behind them. Um, so vitamin D, C, and A, 
and they don't say the amounts on there. So just in case you're asking, uh, turmeric and curcumin. So um, two of our favorite supplements that have those in there are Rox, R-O-X, and Epic. Those two supplements you can find on Revelation Health, um, and you can get it there. If you've never ordered with Reve Revelation Health, just know your first order has 10% off if you use my last name. So that's a, that's a gift to you. Um, but that is, those two supplements are really, especially ROX, is really high in antioxidants, specifically the antioxidants that will uh, produce stem cells. So now, if you do the food and you do the supplements that I just mentioned with a probiotic, what they found is you got even more stem cell repair. So every, I mean, a good mac microbiome seems to help everything, right? So make sure that you're adding a probiotic to that. So seven things, three of them are fasts, two of them are exercise styles, one of them is a food group, and one of them is a um, supplement group. Now, this came up as I was talking to my resetters and I was thinking, okay, how do you maximize all of that? And a couple things I would tell you is I would do in these fast training weeks, or you can do it on your own, where you would do a fast mimicking for four days, or you would do water fasting for three days. You would come out of those experiences, and then you would start to add in HIIT training and resistant training exercises, um, like the ones you'll find on my workout playlist. And then you start feasting on blueberries, pomegranates, um, and the spirulina. Yes, um, you can have a glass of red wine. Red wine, when it's clean red wine, really helps with cardiac um, stem cells, but make sure it's organic. We personally like dry farm wines because they have tested it for all the chemicals. So if you come out of that fast and you have a, a, some red wine, don't break your fast with red wine, but a couple days later you have some red wine, you're gonna maximize stem cells, and then you load up on those supplements. It's kind of a cool protocol, and you, that could be something that you do once a week or, or um, two weeks out, out of every month or you know, a week and a half out of every month, but you're really diving into using all the biohacks that we know around stem cells um, that are involved fasting, exercise, and food and supplementation. So I just thought that up today when I was talking to my resetters. So I'll, I'll actually type it up um, and I'll put it here on this community page. I'll just map out like a seven week protocol for you guys um, for stem cell production. So no, that's coming. Okay, your questions. Let's get to your questions. So um, I love somebody said, I can't wait to feast on, on brisket. So um, totally get you, and I will encourage you to do a day of veggies first and some, some higher carb for foods, and then a day after that, do some brisket. If you go from a fast mimicking diet right into meat, it can be a little tough, um, but you know your, your gut better than me. Uh, somebody asked something, said, made a comment about our st uh, so my husband and I's stamina and all the videos and stuff we've been doing. It's a testament to fasting. So I, here's, thank you for the kind comment, by the way, but the reason I wanted to address it on this is you can, with fasting and keto and the biohacking tools and the, um, the repairing your microbiome, everything I'm teaching you guys here, it can create insane amounts of stamina, mental clarity, and energy for you. And, and so much of it you can do without spending a dime. So I love that comment because I, I, I had chronic fatigue 30 years ago. I did not always have this energy. So I created it through lifestyle and you can create it too. So please make sure that you get that this is not unique to me. You can have this energy too. We just got to keep you fasting and doing the keto and the variation and the stem cell production, everything that I'm teaching you here. So. Okay, uh, somebody said that they want to keep going on a fast, but that their ketones are at 4.3. I'm going to say this again because it's really important. Um, the edge of when you want to break a fast is 8.0. So if you're at 4.3, awesome. If your blood sugar gets below 40, you want to break a fast. Okay, somebody who's in the middle of a, of a three-day fast and they're like, or they're heading towards the third day and they're suffering, they're struggling, do you just suffer on through is kind of the, the way I looked at that message. And this is where the fasting trio really helps out. 
Um, so if you haven't tried the fasting trio, which is fast tonic, uh, cyto detox and bind, that will really mitigate your symptoms. Um, many of you are, um, have tried different versions of, of apple cider vinegar. One of you said that you've been doing apple cider vinegar, Himalayan salt, lime and cream of tartare, and that's been helping your symptoms. So that's from our community. I'm just passing that along, but I like the fasting trio. It works really well for me. Um, and it really helps with the symptoms. And the more you fast, those symptoms start to go away. Somebody asked if dry fasting was better than water fasting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really hard to say. I do think there's a benefit to a 12 to 24 hour fast, dry fast. And I think there is some belief that um, it will get you into ketosis and get you more stem cell reject, uh, reju rejuvenation. Um, quicker than a three-day water fast. But um, here's the thing, we don't ha I looked for the research, I can't find it. So if you are a dry, dry fast lover and you have the research, post it here on this video and I would love to see it. But I, I, I can't find the, the research on it. I know a lot, there's a, a belief about it, but I can't find the research. Um, somebody said that with fast mimicking, they're not getting into ketosis. And they're also on chemo drugs, so they were wondering if the chemo drugs were preventing it. So fast mimicking, you may not get as deep of a keto ketogenic experience as um, water fasting. Drugs can, of all kinds, can alter how deep you go, you, what, your, what happens with your blood sugar and what happens with your ketones. Now, having said that, I assume if you're on a chemo, chemo drug, you've had a cancer diagnosis, and I want to encourage you to keep fasting. Um, keep at it. So just because your numbers aren't where you want it to be, keep fast mimicking, try some of the water fasts. Um, go listen to the episode, Resetter TV episode I did with Nasha Winters, because there is so much good information there on um, fasting and mitochondrial repair for patients who have cancer. Tomorrow, I'm going to um, put a, a video, a Resetter TV episode on breast cancer will go on here. That is amazing and has a lot of good suggestions for breast cancer. Uh, somebody asked about the mitochondria and what are all the ways you can repair the mitochondria. You were fascinated by it, and I'm fascinated by it too. Uh, and you put that there was an infrared, does infrared saunas help? Let me give you a list here for mitochondrial repair. You gotta make sure you keep your sugars down. You gotta keep eat the right oils. You gotta remove toxins like heavy metals from your body. Um, you got to look at things like hydrogen water to get in there and repair the, the, the mitochondria and help with free radicals that, get, that, that come off of the mitochondria. Um, oxygen. So a lot of the hyperbaric oxygen trainers we're looking to bring into my clinic, a Live O2, which is an oxygen trainer where you put it on your mouth and you, and you ride oxygen is coming in while you're riding a bike. So there's a lot of interesting research around what oxygen can do for mitochondria um, and light therapy. So, oh, and, and I have one more thought. Light therapy like infrared, so the infrared sauna is great. Lasers are great. The juve light, if you like the red light from the juve light is great. Those kind of things are repairing mitochondria. And then Bruce Lipton really explained to us that mitochondria need your thoughts to be positive. That negative thoughts can affect the cell membrane and can affect the health, the general health of your cells. And he's a biochemist. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Bruce Lipton, just Google him or um, put him in the search bar here on, on YouTube. His videos are incredible. He's a biochemist who really talks about um, our thoughts and how they affect our, our cells. So his work's been around for a long time. I think originally, you know, there was some a little bit like, uh, is this woo-woo? But he has been around for so long. He's done so many studies. It is not woo-woo anymore. There's a lot of um, uh, scientific backing to what he's doing. Uh, nitrous oxide, how do you help it? Um, there's actually an exercise that Dr. Mercola does. You can go to Dr. Mercola's website and type in nitrous, uh, nitrous oxide exercises. And he has a, a, what he calls a nitrous oxide dump. And it's like moving your arms, doing some s s uh, sitting. Uh, so go look there. Um, if there's an, a lot of interest in nit nitric oxide dumping, uh, I'd, I'll, I'll do a video for you guys and kind of show you how that works. Uh, stem cells and cancer, yes. Um, stem cells can help cancer. 
Um, fasting can help cancer. Please make sure it's a part of your stem cell protocols. Um, I know down at the Hope for Cancer, Dr. Tony Jimenez um, is doing a lot of stem cell injections for people with cancer. So please go check out his work. It's called Hope for Cancer. It's an incredible clinic. He's doing amazing work uh, um, with uh, uh, people who have cancer. So, um, and part of that is stem cell therapy in, via injections. Uh, UTIs while you fast, why is that happening? Or is it due to low pH? Um, yeah, we see a lot that it can be stressful on the kidneys. So make sure you're drinking enough water. It could be a pH change. It could also be that you, your kidneys um, were harboring an infection and as you started to clear, clear uh, your kidneys out, the infection revealed itself, but we've seen it a lot. So hydration is really good. Um, we use a, a supplement for kidney infections called Echovirome. So it's called EC, it's phage therapy, and you can find it on Revelation Health. Um, break fast, how do, you, how do you break the fast? Um, what does a feast day look like? Um, so I think this person was referring to the fact that I, um, I said go slow, especially from a water fast. I would do broths. I would do steamed vegetables. I would avoid meat for 24 hours. Um, I like doing uh, kombuchas and some, some um, probiotic rich foods is great. Um, but when you feast, when you go into a feast, there's really kind of no rules around the macros of feasting. The way I look at feasting is that what you want to do is just up your good foods. So good carbs like potatoes and sweet potatoes. Um, quinoa is good. You can add in some fruits when you're feasting. Um, you can add it. Don't worry, need to worry about protein amounts. Like feasting is taking all of these good foods and you're just upping them. Um, and then after a feast day, you go back into a fast day. So feast day doesn't mean go crazy. Feast day means take a lot of these great foods, eat more of them, and then go back into a fast. I hope that helps that you understand that. And then we had some really good suggestions about, I, I told you about the apple cider vinegar. Somebody said stem cells that don't forget sleep and sunlight and supplements. And I can't even read my own writing. Uh, oh, and adaptogens. So yes, agreed. I will put an article tomorrow that lists out many of them. And then I want to, I will end my comments on, we're getting a lot of questions about keto fasting and postmenopause. So postmenopausal women, even though your um, hormone levels are low, your estrogen, your testosterone, and your progesterone, um, you still are, will benefit from throwing in some of the protein, the hormone rich days that I talk about. Go watch the video I did on four different types of women and how each type should do keto and fasting different. But um, I am finding that postmenopausal women, you don't need to time your fast um, like perimenopause or people for women in childbearing ages. You don't have to time that as much. Um, so you can get away with fasting whenever, but I would still encourage you, I think the comment the person left was, I noticed that my friends that do keto that are postmenopausal do it a little different. Well, you, you'll see that I'm a big fan of variation. And I feel like when we get really strict with keto and we get too rigid with fasting, it doesn't matter what your time of life is, you're going to eventually come up against a wall. So with postmenopause, let's just throw in some hormone days. Let's throw in some of these um, uh, days and you can do uh, one or two here or there and then go back to keto. So don't lose sight of the foods that you need to raise progesterone. We live in an estrogen dominant world. So you're getting exposure from anything that's creating more increase in estrogen. Um, you're getting exposed to it in your air, your soils, our furniture gives off toxins that will create estrogen to go high. And one of the ways we bring estrogen down is by raising progesterone. And progesterone you raise through eating foods like potatoes, citrus foods, tropical fruits, beans, squashes, things like that. So just keep in mind that even though you're postmenopausal, you still want to do that. Okay, questions? Um, question, uh, well, I think uh, something I would, I would emphasize is you want to talk about using a meter in fasting and three going three days? Yeah, I know a lot of you don't want to use a meter, um, but I would encourage you to use a meter. 
I think two of the, we've watched so many people fast now through you guys here on YouTube and our resetter group. And I'll say that the two major mistakes that people make, one is that they don't use a meter and we've had people who faint and pass out. So that's not smart. Um, you wanna know where your blood sugar's at. If your blood sugar gets below 40, that's not good. You wanna stop. Um, so you need to do that meter. I think it's really important. Um, I know that it's an added expense, uh, but it's a worthy one. So do the meter. And then the second thing I'm really seeing that I'm concerned about is people going on these very long dry fasts. Um, like I said, I'm not, I'm not the believer that you should go longer than 24 hours. So surely there are people out there that believe it. It's not me. So I think 12 to 24 hours is a good range for dry fast. Uh, somebody, uh, did fasting and it gave them acid reflux. Acid reflux and fasting that can happen as the pH changes. Um, a couple recommendations that I have are, um, uh, apple cider vinegar actually surprisingly works. Um, uh, there's a supplement called DJIS. You can find it on Revelation Health that works. Aloe vera juice will work as well. And I find that the more you fast, that will go away. But you might need to lean on those in the beginning. Um, the five day versus a three day water fast. What are the additional benefits of stem cells and autophagy? Yeah, you know, a lot of us, once we hit day three, we want to stay in a fasted state because now we're in stem cell land. We're in max stem cell land. So our body's now really rebooting the immune system. We've got maximum output of stem cells. So if we continue on for four and five days, we're, those day four and five, you're getting more stem cells. So it's more regeneration. Um, now, having said that, um, you know, I, I, up until this fast training week, whenever I did a water fast, I always did five days. This fast training week, what I did is three days water and then two days fast mimicking. So you don't always have to, you know, make sure you're enjoying the process as well and mix it up. Um question about Lyme disease. Will fasting help Lyme disease? Yeah, and this question, these questions come up a lot, like will fasting help X? And I, I'm going to tell you that fasting helps with everything. So here's my dog. <laughs> I don't know if you can do it. My dog even, our dogs actually fast. I'm not joking. Um, we do, our dogs do one meal a day and about a couple times a month they do uh, a a, 20, uh, a 36 hour fast. And that is under the um, guidance of our natural holistic vet that I'll be bringing on to reset our TV. So total side note, but back to Lyme's disease. So it, yes, it can help, but um, there's, it won't be the cure all, but whatever condition you have, especially autoimmune conditions, there fasting is an incredible way to tap into an inner wisdom in your body that is so much smarter than every doctor on the planet. So use fasting, get, that's why I call it a fasting lifestyle. Get used to all these seven different fasts. Part of why I do fast training week is because I wanna mix it up for you. I don't want it to get boring. I want it to have a, keep being interesting because there's so much benefit there for all of us. But if you have a very specific condition like Lyme, yes, it will help. Um, fasting is a healing state that you all, that we all want to be in. So I think, you know, we say food is medicine and I want to add on to that. Fasting is medicine. Both of them are medicines. One thing about Lyme disease is there's been found a lot of linkage between a healthy mi gut microbiome and yeah. helping deal with it. The Mayo Clinic, Harvard, they're all doing research on that. Yeah. Right with Lyme disease, one of the things we know is that um, Lyme can really proliferate um, in a depleted microbiome. So you, in, like, let's go to cancer for a second. It, every expert I know on cancer says, don't treat the cancer, treat the terrain that the cancer is living in. Meaning, how did your body be, be able to build cancer cells? Look at the environment, the terrain it's living in. I'm gonna say the same thing for Lyme. Look at the environment that allowed Lyme to grow and to become symptomatic. And the microbiome is a key piece to that. So um, repairing your microbiome, fasting, um, and then on top of that, yes, there's a lot of cool protocols you can do for Lyme, but good point.
Um, can fast, oh, it, are eggs okay to stop a fast? Uh, it, I think they're okay. They're a little hard. And I, it, my very first water fast, I did that. I had scrambled eggs. I thought, oh, scrambled eggs will be good on my digestion. And I just wanted to fall asleep. So they were really hard and they were like a lump in my stomach. I couldn't digest it very well. So I'm going to recommend that you, um, that you maybe put it either later in the day or the next day. It could be difficult for you. Uh, can fasting change your menstrual cycle? Fasting can change your menstrual cycle in a couple different ways. Um, it changes your menstrual cycle. I've seen people it pull um, women out of menopause. When I interviewed Dr. Anna Kabeka, um, she said that I was so intrigued by how she said she had come out of menopause three times. And I think that's so important that she went into menopause because of a stress situation. She came out of menopause because she repaired started to repair her hormones. Something else forced her back into menopause. She did some healing. She came out of menopause. So it's very common we're seeing with fasting and keto for women to come out of menopause. Okay, so understand that. Um, then it, if you're not even close to menopause, then yeah, it can make your periods be a little irregular as your body's healing. Now, if it stays that way, I'm gonna encourage you to, to go watch my video that I did on how the week before your period, you should not be fasting, you should not be doing keto, you wanna be doing the progesterone rich foods. So if you, you've been doing a lot of keto and fasting and you're losing your period, it may be time to do some hormone building days. So go watch that video, I just put that out um, last week. It, I think the title of it is Women's Hormones and then it has says keto and fasting on it. And menstrual migraines, the same kind of advice? Yeah, same thing with migraines. Um, we see migraines of all kinds with fasting. That's part of the healing process. I know it's not fun. Um, I, I would encourage you to stick with keto and, and fasting and, and hormone building the week before your cycle. Um, other things that can cause migraines, menstrual migraines, mold, if you're living in a moldy home, or uh, heavy metals are another, another, if you have a heavy metal toxicity. So if you've tried everything, it's not working, it's time to look at those two things. Okay. Um... Last question, is the water fast hard on kidneys? Is the water fast hard on kidneys? Um, we are seeing some kidney infections. Um, I, I, you know, I don't, I haven't seen it cause any kidney damage for people. I haven't seen any research that it's hard on kidneys. If you have a weak kidney or you're concerned about it, there are supplements you can take to help support your kidneys, um, like a K kidney. You can find that on Revelation Health. So I have with my patients, if I, if I suspect that their kidneys have just been taxed too much, I will supplement as we put them through fasts. So I hope that helps. And then maybe even coming out of a fast, do some, some cranberry juice without any sugar, dilute it in some water and, do, and, and drink some of that after your fast to just replenish those kidneys. So, okay. Again, let me know you guys here on YouTube, has it been helpful for me to come and do lives every night? Um, I'd love your feedback on that. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, this channel is for you. So what do you want to know more of? Let me know and I'll make sure I do a video on it. Once I get done with Fast Training Week, um, I'll dive into doing more videos that will address some of the specific questions that you guys have. If you want to join us in my Women's Reset, um, we are, I am taking 50 women through my 15 day metabolic reset. I want to help you unstick your weight. So I'm leaving it at only 50 people so that I can get to know you and I can help make sure that you in this 15 day process, you unstick your weight. Um, if you want to join us in that, just put women's reset in the notes and we'll send you. Uh, some information on that. We'll also post a link in the com in the show notes here. Um, we are already at around 31 people signed up. So I have 19 spots left. So, and it launches in two weeks. So no, if you're, you want to do it, hop on it because I will cap it at 50. So, okay. My heart goes out to you guys. I am uh, humbled by your, your beautiful comments.